Hello students, so today I am going to start Robotics and Artificial Intelligence subject having course 66 of the ICSE class 10. Now let me show you what I will be talking about. So this is the class 10 part 1 of the syllabus where you have got the robotics and basically today I will be talking about components of robots as a system. So let's start. So you see a robot is more than just a single machine, right? It's a complex system with different components working together in a very coordinated and interconnected way. And so to understand how a robot functions, it's important to understand its various components and thereafter understand how this component interact or talk with each other. So, let us see a different components talk about the different components with examples as well as their interconnections right. Let us start. So, the first is the controller which is the brain and this is basically the CPU or central processing unit of the robot just like a computer. And this part is basically a computer, often a microcontroller like Arduino or a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi that houses the robot's program and logic. Now, its primary job that is the brain's job is to process information and thereafter make decisions. So, what are the functions of the controller? To receive data from sensors, execute the program's instructions, send commands to the muscles or actuators and manage the flow of information between all other components. Now, let us look at an example. So, in a simple line following robot, the controller is the microcontroller that runs the code. It receives the information from the line detecting sensor and based on its programming, it decides whether to move straight turn left or turn right. So, what is the interconnection? You see the controller is the nervous system that connects everything. So, basically brain plus nervous system and it is physically connected to the sensors via input pins to receive data and to the actuators or muscles via output pins to send control signals. Next we have sensors. Just like us humans, robots also have sensors like eyes, ears and touch and this allow the robot to gather information about it, both its internal state as well as the external environment. Now, this is important, right? Now, this data is crucial for the robot to operate autonomously and respond to changes. So, what are the functions of these sensors? So, detect physical properties of the environment like light, distance, temperature, even pressure. Okay. Next, to provide feedback about the robot's own state. Example, joint position, motor speed. Next, to convert physical data into electrical signals that the controller can understand. So, let us look at an example. Well, example is let us consider an ultrasonic sensor which basically detects obstacles by emitting a sound wave and measuring the time it takes to return and this is used in a robot car to avoid collisions. See? Now, what about light sensor or photo resistor? Its resistance changes with light intensity and so a robot can use this to detect darkness or follow a light source. See, such beautiful application. Next, we have touch sensor or push button, a simple on and off switch basically that detects physical contact and this can be used as a bumper sensor to signal a collision. So, what is the interconnection? You see, sensors send their raw data as electrical signals to the controller's input port. And this forms the first half of a feedback loop where the controller receives information about the world. 
Next we have actuators which are the muscles. So these are devices that convert energy usually electrical into physical motion and they are responsible for making the robot move, manipulate objects and perform tasks. So what are their functions? Basically to create movement in joints, wheel and other mechanical parts. Also to control the position, speed and force of the robot's movement. Let us see some examples. So servo motor which is a precise motor that can move to a specific angle and it is used in a robotic arm to control the angle of each joint. Next we have DC motor. Again it's a simple motor that spins continuously and it's used to drive the wheels of a mobile robot. Also we have hydraulic or pneumatic actuators and these are used in heavy duty industrial robots that require immense force like those in car manufacturing. So the interconnection is that the controller sends electrical commands often via specialized motor drivers to the muscles or actuators and this is the second half of the feedback loop where the controller's decisions result in some physical action. Okay, after that we have got end effectors which are basically the hand. So it's basically the tool or attachment at the end of the robot's arm or the manipulator. Now it's what allows the robot to directly interact with objects and perform its designated task. So what are the functions? Grasp and hold objects, example gripper, next weld paints or cut used done by process tools also to perform surgical procedures and we have got surgical robots for that like the Da Vinci Z surgical robotic system okay so examples let's see the two finger gripper a common end effector used to pick and place objects on the assembly line next welding torch it's attached to an industrial robot arm to weld car bodies also we have vacuum section cup which is used to lift and move flat objects like glass or sheet metal so the interconnection is that the end effector is physically connected to the final joint of the robotic arm which is a powerful which is powered by the, an actuator muscles now this controller sends command to this actuator to move the end effector to its correct position and perform the task and then the last component is the power source you see these are all electrical devices so they need electrical energy to operate their components and this can vary depending on the robot's size mobility and task so the function of this battery is to provide electrical energy to the controller right so the power source is basically provides electrical energy to all the other components like controller sensor actuator and some examples include either batteries or direct electrical connection right so if we put it all together we have got the controller which receives the command from the program to move forward now let us consider here a simple wheeled robot designed to navigate a room. So now with this example let us look at the various components of the robot. The first is controller which receives the command for this program to move forward. Now the controller sends a signal to the actuator which is the DC motor to start spinning the wheels. Now as the robot moves it sensors example an ultrasonic sensor continuously measure the distance to objects in front of it and the sensor sends this data back to the controller next if the controller says if the distance is less than 10 centimeters stop and turn and the controller processes this sensor data and sends a new command to the actuator see this is how it's done now the actuators receive the new command stop the wheels and turn the robot in a different direction and during all these processes the power source provides the necessary electrical energy for this entire feedback loop to occur. So you see this constant loop of sense, think and act 
demonstrate how all the components are fundamentally connected and the controller serving as the central hub that orchestras the actions of the physical body in response to the perceived environment. 